We are back in a breezy, cold day here in Brisbane. Winter is around the corner, and we got meanderings once again for you, me and lights out there. I am one. Kyron here on the other side. On you can see us. He's got a beanie on. It is cold, folks. Yep. It is cold. It's starting to get uh, darker quickly. I'm going to get straight into the meandering today. Where we, uh, I just want to yeah. point out right at the start. So this is a very pre-recorded session. Very they're, pre-recorded. They're always pre-recorded the meanderings, but this one, uh, one is. I'm currently just in now. the USA. Yeah, he's in the USA. As as we're, uh, how how much were you into the USA at this point? Let me bring up my little calendar here, and I can tell you. But yes, I'm, one, I'm here in spirit. Yeah, I uh, know you've been there for almost a full week. Oh dang! Okay, so I've been enjoying yeah. myself. Probably. Uh, so it's the twentieth. As we're 20th. speaking. Okay, so I'm right in VCon. So I'm like basically in VCon right now. Nice. But uh, through the magic of the interwebs and audio and media, yes, I am here early. Beautiful. Now we're going to keep track around right because I can feel a little bit of rain. So I don't want you folks, me and more lights at home, to miss out on some good information. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about something that happened at work, something recent. Um, but obviously, recent now would be like a month ago when this comes out. But in particular, um, I the uh, being precise with your words is very, very important, folks. So I'm going to give you very useful. A little example of what happened when uh, we didn't do this. So, just recently, uh, so to, like to talk about at work, we did a release for VIPs, very important people. And unfortunately, through a lack of communication, things went out into production before they actually should have gone to production. So, things uh, should have been at a particular date, were there earlier. And then, oopsie daisies, things had to get rolled back and had to go backwards. Now, through some of the work colleagues and conversations, like many, many times, people ask the questions, are we ready? Is this all good? Is the release on, on path and whatnot? And everybody agreed. Everyone was like, yes. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's good. <laughs> we understand what's going on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Until the release happened. And then it was like, oh, no, we actually weren't aligned in this particular thing. One of the learning points, one of the things I took away afterwards to uh, have conversations with people was like, okay, no, <clears throat> we've got to be more precise with our words. So when we're talking about this, let's be really specific about what we mean, when it should be released, whatever 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 and again it just highlighted to me once again it is so important like when we say like when you hear or you hear these thoughts or learnings like you know from 12 rules of life from jordan peterson you're like you know be precise with your words and it's like oh when would that apply fucking applies everywhere it applies <laughs> fucking everywhere motherfuckers like don't give me this shit and it's one of the biggest things as well i do now with new teams with new people that i work with because it applies obviously at work it applies everywhere else to be like one of the things i want my team or people that i work with is to be precise with their words. So when you're saying something, you know, and if you say to me, oh, hey, this is broken, no, don't say to me that this is broken. Say like, very explicitly, this is broken because this, 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 and this. And if you don't know, then that's good because that's what we've got to go figure out as to why it is that that's more broken. So yep. I would uh, recommend the Mere Mortal Lights out. This is my little uh, recommendation. And not that I often give recommendations uh, or give you, um, you know, things that you should do, but I am telling you that you should be more precise with your words. Mm. Uh, and if you think that you're not if you think that you're already being precise, I'm going to guarantee you that you're still not being precise enough and you should almost battle daily to be more precise with your words. I think it is such such an important thing um, and it cannot be unsaid. Yeah, obviously, it was like a bit of an issue. It didn't end up being like a commercial issue or anything like that, but I could see how doing a couple of oopsie daisies like that and not being precise, like you could have just avoided a lot of these issues so easily if you could just be precise with exactly what things were going on. Mm, so, mm, yeah. I, I don't know if you've had a any of like being unprecise as of late with with words or with actions no i've I've been pretty good but i i do notice like listening to podcasts and just hearing particular things and particularly if they're arguing in a certain way and i'm being like "Mm, yeah that 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 word there was sloppy Mm. like you should maybe use probably instead of definitely yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah so oh man that well i mean it sucks that it uh (laughs) affected you you personally with uh with that and, and what do you think it's like the remedy for that is it to have you know additional communication is it to change the communication style is it to have more responsibility on certain people you know, well what? I think if you're say there's a little bit of work context but I think it applies mostly everywhere I think that if you if you're ultimately accountable or you're more accountable for a myriad of people like really thinking through what is being said so again like in the example hey this is broken but being able to have the conversation like really why is it broken like let's be precise about it so you can normally it's like 
what's the owner, what's the date, what's actually wrong, like things like that. Okay, that, like you, you can only uncover that when you actually know the details or you understand it more precisely. But I think the there's an aspect about you know people should be good listeners. People should be really good listeners, and I agree that's a really good concept. But I think I would even extend it more for this whole position where you should be really good at listening to what other people are saying, and you should be really good at bad listening about what you are saying as well. Like I think it's pretty important to also be mindful like if you yourself are talking to somebody right and it might be because it's you know, who you are unconsciously or who you are consciously perhaps and you'll say something around like oh no i definitely saw this happen and then you have that pause afterwards you know either they're talking or you're just in your own piece and being like oh actually it's not there it's not mm-hmm. actually definitely it's 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 maybe it's probably or maybe or whatever i, I talked about this obviously in many drinks a long time ago but just like i think that's why knowing like statistics and percentages also does help out because you know the difference between someone saying oh that's probably going to work you know is it 10 percent is it 90 yeah, yeah, percent yeah like what's yeah. what's probably going to work now you can kind of get away from most things but if you want to be precise I mean, if you do really want to be precise like it's it is nice like i don't i don't encourage people to be talking about like you know i'm 90 percent confident that it's within this 95 percent interval no like we're not talking what was that called and of our tests and shit like that okay and that's but be pretty specific like being more precise about oh like I think I saw them in between this time or something along this line does help in being at least moving away from having that uh, the unknown in, in what the language is being said or the, what's being spoken so mm. anyways, that, that was just a piece that came up and I was like ah I find the most useful one for me is when it's it's a blanket statement I throw out and it's useful to correct. So I was listening to one of our old episodes and I said, you know, oh, this is like the funniest thing I've, I've heard. Mm. And then immediately corrected myself. I was like, okay, no, well, it's not that funny. It was kind of funny. And, and you know, that that's sort of self-correction. I, I When I can catch myself, I think it's useful, to, it is useful. To, to immediately be like, no, okay, no, wait, no, not exactly that this yeah and 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 catch myself from from yeah making like too big a blanket statement or a yeah, wide think, thing which you just chuck out and, and yeah. i think that you can you can have the conversation about it's a negative to do that to yourself like pulling yourself like if you say something like it's de- definite and then having to say like oh no it's probably some people will say like oh well, that's that's also like a negative because you you should just stay, stick with your original statement and just go forward with that mm. And I go, I just think it's more powerful. It's like, oh, that's useless clarification sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. and I go, no, I, it is useful clarification. And obviously, case in point, exactly that. Exactly that, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had one related to oh fuck moments, is what oh, I yeah. call them. Uh, so, how many oh fuck heart-dropping moments does one experience in their life, do you think, where the bottom falls out from your understanding, your, your perception? So, in reference to this is the... The Hosky fias- fiasco, the Hosky April Fool's joke mm. they pulled on me, uh, and and on plenty of other people as well, and that was definitely a oh shit moment in that I just severely thought I'd severely misjudged something. Yep. Just one of those ones where it was like, man, not that I'm investing with them, but mm. it it made me think like, wow, I really misjudged this. Mm misjudged what i thought was reality how how much do you think that actually happens in life and do you have any moments that you you've like cared to share about where you, it's just you got something so completely wrong and it makes you think man and like is did i really can i trust anyone like you know i, I think one of the main ones that maybe people in general have experienced would be finding out your partner has cheated on you or mm. something like that that's like whoa i misjudged them have i misjudged everyone yeah yeah and 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 i'll ask you a question back as i start replying um is it good to have those oh shit moments Mm, um so i think one for me i think that i reckon roughly one a year is kind of like a good thing to have like it to give (laughs) you like a good little punch in the gut to be like oh no this is actually reality um i think the one that clearer comes comes to my mind it was more like an oh shit moment because uh, through 2020, like every other person, I was investing into shares and everything was going well because everything was going up. So I just thought, man, I'm doing well here. Like I'm buying Afterpay, I'm buying Zip, I'm buying all these things. Everything's going up. I'm making dollar bills here. Yep. Uh, And then I bought a particular share, an option, in fact, with quite a bit of money at the time that 
the next day it all went to zero it all <laughs> went to zero yeah and that was that wild. was like a like everything was going well like everything was like making money everything was green and all of a sudden like overnight it just really gave me like a reality check of being like oh has all my trades been just like absolute luck yes I have <laughs> 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 yes they fucking have but I was like damn okay yeah. okay that gave me some reality that definitely slowed me down because I was trading like six figures weekly like mm, six figures weekly yeah. is what I was trading like I was like it was a lot I was pushing volume you, through you trading. paid a huge amount of fees and um, <laughs> yeah. brokerage yeah so for me I went okay that's a reality check on I, I should really be be mindful of how I'm investing here because uh, I could see that there was a lot of luck on my side and it could very quickly run out and it just ran out hard and quickly at that particular point and that made me go yeah okay I don't I can't trust myself fully that I or at least it helped me pull myself out of, of just this uber confidence I just built up on that share source, source share training so I guess that's like a, I guess that would be an example yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I'd, I'd say to answer your question yes it's useful because the world's going to change and so you need to sort of change with it mm. and these types of moments are good because it can force you to reevaluate now in the, I think in a it's probably best in like a medium level like you're sort of saying yeah. like a once a year is tolerable it'd be bad if you stack them up for a once in a 20 year event which yeah. is like um god's on my side i you know he wouldn't he would never let uh something bad happen to my children because i know mm. like i've seen them they've never sinned they've never done anything wrong yep. your child gets cancer mm. and and dies within six months that would be a like a that's a mm. not only reality changing but like reality like devastating yeah it alters it alters like your set, reality really yeah. set of events and that would i can imagine that just throwing someone so much through a loop that it's like you know they take years to recover mm. they take years to to get some sort of semblance or a grasp on their, their day-to-day experience that they can you know yeah. rest on again yeah i'd agree i think that um, i was just thinking that they'd be definitely i agree with you like having like medium oh shit moments like once a year seems like a good thing to keep you like in balance but like another example is you know, imagine if you were someone who got pulled into like one of those cults or whatnot for years and then all of a sudden you're like get pulled out of it and it's like oh shit i've been lied to for 12 years yeah and i've been like yeah. giving all my money and la 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 and it's like oh damn and okay. which is you know th- that's sort of similar to my dad's experience with the with the seventh day adventism okay, like he just for him it I, I, w- I would he would argue that them and cults like a sex cult are one of the same are pretty yeah like the the basic char- characteristics are, mm. are there um yeah Ill- illness is a, a pretty big um uh, a family member of mine got got like a diagnosis which was just you know it threw me through a loop for mm. sure um, that was one actually sort of like a slow simmering one it, mm. it didn't hit all at once it was more like after a year I was like whoa I, I changed a lot in that year mm. like I thought about a lot my thinking changed a whole lot mm. um, mostly to to not focus so much on actually not focus so much on long term but actually get a bit more short-term, short-term pleasure and joy in my life to spend more time with them mm. to, to be more available sort of thing um, but yeah yeah I, I think yeah medium <laughs> medium doses are it's probably the good to keep you on your toes a little bit yeah, yeah. well this is word I just want to make sure that I got this and it'll, it'll link to something else as well but um, not really um, well, what I was thinking in my mind was more like you know, is it like even the the oh shit moments that are happening in the medium in the medium scale and let's say they, they do happen and they let you kind of oh, move forward and give you a good experience but is it actually even worth preparing yourself for the big ocean ship moment so I guess this is like an example of stoicism right like it's you know a lot of the practices from stoicism get you so that if something goes horrifically wrong then you're going to be okay in a similar sense now I don't know like it's not like everything they do it goes towards that alignment but it's like you know an example of like once a month you might live really really like poorly or sleep on like the ground or something yeah like, like we were talking about in that recent episode about um, 
like involuntary or like cutting off no alcohol on Easter sort yeah, of thing. Like, yeah, like yeah, like so voluntarily putting yourself in a in a probably in a state of suffering more than you're used to. So that if an ownership moment happens, so like let's say you lose you lose your house, you lose everything and you have to sleep on the under a bridge for three months, it's not like it absolutely cripples you to no end. It's like okay, I like, obviously it sucks mm. but Okay, you can kind of you can deal with it. Like you can you can do something about it, as yeah. opposed to just not being able to handle it at all. Is there even a? Do you think there's a part of this, of a human that should be prepared for the big oh shit moment? Like should you be prepared for your kid to get cancer? Yeah, like keeping it constant front of mind, or or you know, I think entertaining as much possibilities as possible is is useful. Um, well, in my mind, I just go, because there's something that, that you said, which sort of sparked me, which I was like, there's a lot of stuff that comes to long-term thinking that is good, and I get it. But I think one way that you could reduce a really big oh shit moment on the long term is to think more short-term, in the sense that focus more on the here and now and the positivity, because you truly don't know what is going to be in the longer term. So rather than be like oh no I'm gonna like you could yes you can do things like I want to prepare myself so that you know if I don't have a bed then I'll practice not having a bed and be okay with it Mm. sure I get that but maybe like from a short term perspective if you really focus in on like okay I say I'm with my loved ones right now and I'm really enjoying it and that's all that like really matters right now and it's okay then whatever happens long term if they were like to die the next day or whatever okay because like right now it's totally fine and I'm enjoying it as, Mm. as holistic like as much as possible um yeah I would I would probably say yeah almost like don't seek them out <laughs> in a way uh, it, would, it would be it'd be just keep keeping the mental flexibility I suppose to be able to handle them that 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 would probably be the main thing so if you find that short-term thinking versus long-term thinking helps you out like if you if you spend more time thinking about the future anticipating events that are unlikely but could happen mm. that that might be up your alley if it's better to be like oh no more short-term thinking i'll deal with it when it comes and save myself like that stresses and so i'm not stressing out all the time so then i have capacity to handle that stress when it comes yeah yeah i just um it's it's such a weird feeling as well where it's just like it's a physical thing as well mm. you can feel like your insides churn like churn a little bit the tightness and you're just like oh well like, yeah especially oh, no. like a big oh, a big no. o- like some yeah. of those ocean managers I was like oh what's what's just happened yeah like it's, it's yeah. a big change um so speaking of words i was trying to find this word and actually didn't mean exactly what i thought it was so i didn't say it but um just just general wanted to uh talk about just verbiage and, and wordage and language yeah Sealed reading, uh, you've all know Harari's uh, Homo Deus, and I'm pretty sure by the time this comes out, I'm still going to be reading it. Yeah. It's such a chunky, chunky it's book. It's a big book. Uh, I don't know, have you read it? No. No. I haven't read it. Um, now, one, I could just incredibly enjoying it. But two, uh, I think it was in Beowulf, I think you mentioned, I believe it was in that book review, that that was like packed with lots of different words. Yeah, lots yeah. of words. Yep. Dude, this book is the same, but obviously like in a gigantic like amount. I can't, and I'm, I, I'm not sure, is it a good thing? Or is it a bad thing that there's such an array and variability of wordage that's used? Because, yeah, he he finds, like, all different ways to say brilliant, all different ways to say great. Mm. And he does keep it, like, very... Like, for every time that it's said in a different way, it's, like, very unique to that particular sentence or paragraph, which I do like. But I'd also go, oh, is it... Like, is it really that great to do that the whole time in every single story? Like, there's parts of it that I do enjoy. There's parts of it that I go, you could just use the same word. Like, are you just trying to, like, just be, you know, have some flair here and try to use all the different words possible? I don't know. Where did you land? I know you can't talk about it already in, in Beowulf book review, but, like, if you were to pick up another book and had, like, every single different way to say good through it, do you think it'd be a good thing or a bad thing? It's okay if the, it's it's not done for the purpose of sort of, like, intellectual... Uh, stimulation s- status yeah i guess you could maybe even call it that way so you know if you're if, you, if if you're an author and you're just sitting there like twiddling your thumbs and you're like i want to use the word uh, anti-disestablishmentarianism or whatever mm. you know just how can some, i fit it in yeah how can i get this word in here what can i change to to make this instead of terrific to being like awfully horrifyingly you know like mm come up with the the weirdest word you want out if if they're doing that no 
like that that generally I, I don't feel comes across well and I think you can sort of tell when they're, they're starting to do that mm. the just on the aspect of languages though the the more ways you can express yourself and the more nuances the better I would say because mm. that's that's where it's fun with you know German having like Schadenfreude which is mm. the I'm saying that in the, the way English people say it but it's you know having joy at someone else's expense and you've got a single word just to say that mm. that that's that's kind of nice to to have that to encapsulate uh, that yeah, yeah so i th- i think you know just in terms of a um almost like a a point of view of being efficient it's kind of no- n- nice just say oh that's short and fraud instead of that's oh you're you're having uh, a joy at someone, else's someone else's expense, expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is it is more compiled a little so, bit more compressed so yeah. having you were, yeah, I, I think just in general, more words is is good as mm-hmm. long as you're using them in the correct sense and you're not, sure. not yeah. fucking around. But you know, well, the, what was the word, Gary? Vee, uh, oh, he word? always brings up. Um, um, yes, I know what pontificate, you're talking. Pontificate. Pontif- pontificate. Pontificate. And it's you know, it that do, that's not a word that's seen in a good light. Why not bring up the definition? So let's just be absolutely, absolutely, one hundred percent with this. So pontificate means. To express one's opinions in a pompous and dogmatic way. Yeah, and and he he says it as like I'm just pontificating on this. Yeah, <laughs> he's just he's just expressing his opinions in a pompous and dogmatic way. Which you know, a lot of people would argue that's exactly what Gary Vee's doing. It is. But Maybe he is like really like knows himself. Like that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that's what he actually means to say. But again, considering how much he uses the word hum- uh, humility and mm. applies it to himself I don't think having pompous <laughs> mixed in with that is, is probably the right like, thing but yeah. maybe, maybe he realises that he is pompous yeah, gonna, yeah. if I get to me and Mortal Lights so obviously I'm going to be in VCon right now as it's coming out if I get to speak to Gary some of the things I'm going to be chatting to Gary V about it is one why do you always say pontificate <laughs> two why are you talking about the floor price three why was the apparel so shit and why am I not already making <laughs> man he's going to enjoy that conversation he's going to really enjoy it I, I, I'm going to come with it with humility and gratitude because that cunt made me a lot of money <laughs> but I'm going to be like look thanks for making me lots of money but let's talk about some of the shit things you're not doing oh, so we'll, we'll talk straight with uh, that that's so. funny that's really funny the uh, um, the other thing I would bring up is the whole point of 1984 well not the whole point but one of the large mm. things to take away from that book is they control the population by restricting word choice so that, that's the new speak mm. and that's where they limit the language to such a way that essentially the population has no way to have adversarial thinking about Big Brother. It's There's just no way to actually formulate it in your mind that mm. what the current system is, is bad. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, any anything that can, can stop that sort of thinking, I, that sort of, uh, you know... Restriction? Restriction, I guess, yeah, yeah. that... that lack of freedom in a way yep. um yeah the more the more word choices you have the the better, the better. In, in my in my mind as a as a general rule yeah um, so, right, we've got anything else i got one more yeah, one more i wanted that. to bring up which was a i've had talking about languages and communication mm-hmm. we went to, went to a bitcoin event the other night uh i had a question for the the person presenting but it sort of needed to be Translator transferred over. over through another person through the microphone mm-hmm. and yeah, obviously I, I said it wrong mm. because he the way he repeated it was not the question I was asking um, but it did did get me thinking um, one about like okay was, is that on me was was I the one screwing that up mm. you know could I have and I definitely could have phrased it in a better way but um, I think that just really highlighted like the musical chairs game as well as how mm. meaning can get transferred it was a momentaneous I said something, he repeated it, and they did not, like, X did not equal X. It was like, X became Y. It's just like, what the shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But anyway, afterwards, uh, I was chatting with, with the same person, and um, so he's a Bitcoin OG. He's, mm. he's been in the in Bitcoin for since near the start. Mm. And I asked two people who were really deep into Bitcoin, and I was saying, you know, what sources did you use to learn more about bitcoin and both of them gave me totally unsatisfactory answers which was oh, i don't really think about that um oh, i i just use it now like i'm i'm so far deep into it that i i don't have recommendations and that actually yep. was like 
that's not useful to me. How, you know, you've been in it so long, surely, how did you learn about it? Mm. And to learn about it, you need to have other sources of information. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So do you think you'd ever get to the point where you would not be able to recommend uh, a newbie's coming in, they say Juan to the gym and they say Juan, I, I want to put on some mass or, or you have really good technique with powerlifting. Do you think you'd ever be at the point where you were unable to give a good source of information or, or even at least places to begin with? Because yeah. I was thinking, man, like I, I'd always want to be able to, to say like, okay, when I first started going to the gym, I listened to um, like fitness FAQs and um, uh, th these people who had general, uh, what's his name, Kino Body, even though yeah, nowadays yeah. I've, I don't know what he's up to nowadays. I, I wouldn't, and I've had enough research now to recognize like a bunch of the sort of crap things he says as well. I could still point out the progression and be like, this this was useful, this was useful, this was useful. Yeah, I can see the same way about fitness for sure. But I, for some reason in my mind, I kind of go, I can kind of see how that could happen. Especially, I'm just thinking with NFTs. Like if someone really came to me now and said like, how did you really begin? Hmm. I don't know what I'd give them as an answer. Do you know? Like if someone said to me, and I, and I can kind of maybe, I kind of get what some OG Bitcoiners might be saying because it's not the same as what it is today. Like, you know, let's just say with someone who's been an OG of Bitcoin, right? Now, I remember hearing about it from forums and uh, I remember just playing around on the dark web and hearing about it there. I can't tell somebody that now because yeah, that's not really okay, the way you would learn about it. Because it's so like outdated... Exactly. That. Like so now, if I said to you like NFTs, I can't tell you. Like the only thing I could tell you is like, well, I learned it from Gary, Gary v when he was doing yeah. his first mint. But that's already happened. So how do you know? Like try to learn about it now. I think I'm trying to think about it from their perspective. They might not be able to give you an answer because it doesn't exist anymore in the way that they would have learned it. Mm. Maybe you could still find that, and I think that still could be an acceptable of like, oh, that's how I did it then. Maybe it doesn't translate to now. I think that could very well come a point where we couldn't really explain in 10 years time how we really learnt a lot about from a particular thing if the medium has changed mm. so you know I think a lot of crypto stuff you've learned from podcasts and watching videos now I don't think that's going to happen but if in 10 years videos and podcasts didn't get used anymore for whatever reason how do you recommend that? Well, yeah. I mean, here's, here's a good one. The A lot of the forums, the pickup artist forums, which I mm. used to go on, Rouches, for example, he it's been cleansed. That that, that mm. info is no longer there. Um, yeah, so, and there is. Like, there's still all forums about it that exist, but, you know, you mm. can't give an example of like, oh, you go to but this But, yeah, I, I couldn't say this is a current one that's, mm. like, leading the charge. And I this think is... it's still an unacceptable answer from them. I still see it. Done <laughs> well. You can still answer it better. Like, that was a dumb answer. But I can like I can empathize with the fact of like that sort of response. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe it's like you want to be careful because, I, <clears throat> if Roosh was still doing his thing nowadays, mm. there's a lot of kind of like dodgy shit that he talked about. Some some stuff in there was like, man, that's really fucked up. That you know, like that girl was so intoxicated, mm. her level of consent is very questionable. Mm. Um, that, that's that's kind of fucked up. That's well, really now, fucked up. Now consented, you can withdraw consent halfway through uh, intercourse as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Man. So you just have to like pull out, keep your penis like that split second just before you put it in. Like, nope, stop, nope, done, stop. Um, so so that I could sort of understand if they're yeah. like, you know, this person was really helpful in me understanding Bitcoin, oh. but they're now onto like some sort of scammy behavior. Hmm. That I could be like, oh, okay, yeah. And yeah. and maybe they don't didn't have the time to to say a full minute's worth of explanation, being like, yeah, this 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 this. So exactly, yeah. Um, ah, meanwhile, I'm gonna pause it there. We're gonna we're gonna yeah, it's pause getting, it. It's getting, getting windy. Rainy, it's getting rainy. rainy. It's getting cold. Uh, meanwhile, I hope you enjoyed uh, having a another listen to the mere mortal, mortals here today and meandering. So um, again, we are a valley for valley podcast. So time, talent, treasure, that's what you can provide to us nice. to any of Got the, the new word podcasts right in 2.0. Well. I know, right? Oh, God. Um, again, go send us some Boostergram. Boostergram is the best way to go. Send some Satoshi. Send some commentary. We've talked about plenty. I think you should comment back on it and of course we call them all out during our Musings live episodes. For now, me Immortalites, that is it. One out. Going out. Good. Woo!